Hey guys, welcome to another installment of Talking Dead. Last night was episode three of the series and it was a really, really cool one. So let's get right into it. Let's start with the camp because we see a lot more of it this time around. Yeah, what I really liked here, and I thought this was a much better episode than last week, was getting to know the dynamic here, getting to see that Dale is kind of the peacemaker, getting to see Shane and kind of him going to get water, lots of different things going on. But the important thing was Rick reaches the camp. He's reunited with his wife and son, and we get to see a lot more about what's going on with Lori and Shane, the truth of it. We also get, yeah, the big reveal, yeah. right? That they're in a relationship because Shane has lied to Lori and told her that Rick was actually dead. Yeah, what I liked though was that it definitely paints Shane in a terrible light, but it wasn't just a terrible light because we saw other facets of Shane. We right. saw that Shane could be connecting with Carl, and he also was actually quite caring with Rick. I mean, when Rick wanted to go back to Atlanta, I believed Shane when he was trying to stop him. So he right. wasn't just self-serving. It doesn't let him off the hook at all, but I thought it was a nice nuanced way to look at the character. Now, another cool aspect is we met another new character this week, yeah. uh, Daryl Dixon, who is played by Norman Reedus, mm -hmm. and he's the brother of last week's character, uh, Merle Dixon. Yeah, Norman Reedus, another great actor, and I liked this character because he was a toned-down version of Merle, where yeah. I thought Merle was a little much Okay, here's Daryl. He's also a racist. He's also an a-hole, but a little more believable. He's not just so over the top. And also, you see him hunting. You see that he's definitely sort of useful in camp. Yeah, I liked two elements of his character as well. One, the fact that he wields a crossbow. Mm -hmm. Perfect for zombie killing. Yeah, yeah. And two, just his manner and, and the way he... he uh, deals with the zombies, it's almost like he's been waiting for this zombie apocalypse right. to happen. He's that friend of yours that's like over-prepared for this, mm -hmm. you know? So what do you think about, uh, I know you had issues with Merle's character from last yeah, week. Yeah. We do get to see him very little in this episode, but mm -hmm. we kind of see him in a different light. What'd you think? Yeah, I have to say, you know, as much as I disliked Merle last week, I thought that first scene with him, which is really the only scene he's in, was excellent. I mean, Michael Rooker kind of gave this amazing performance there, I thought, because he's showing this guy who's kind of going through dementia, mm -hmm. he's talking to himself and laughing, then he realizes, oh crap, I am in this horrible situation, and then the zombies show up. Right. <laughs> and I just thought it was such a great scene, showing this tension building, and oh my god, you know, this guy's trapped in basically hell. Right. So I, I did love that sequence. I, you know, not to spoil it, but obviously you've seen the episode if you're yeah. watching this, I don't think the zombies got him. I think he escaped. Yeah, same here. I mean, the hand lying there, I'm like, okay, the zombies don't usually take every part of a guy, and if they did, they wouldn't leave that hand. That's some good meat right there. You know? <laughs> exactly. Well, listen, we want to know what you guys think about last night's episode, so be sure to log into your MyAGN account and write a review in your blogs and use the tags The Walking Dead and Tell It to the Frogs. We'll go through all of them, we'll pick the best ones, and we'll feature it alongside all of our content this week. Yep. Thanks a lot. Yeah.